Life is not easy as a Bears fan. And for all the good vibes that we're heading into the press conference with George McCaskey, all of that optimism seems to go out the window. And Devin Tingle, myself, Mike Mercado, are amongst all, or at least a lot of the segment of Bears fans in the city of Chicago and around the NFL world. So to talk us off the ledge is the godfather of the sports cubicle. It is the one, the only, Jerry Riles. Jerry, welcome to the show. How are you, godfather? Hey, my good friend, Michael Mercado. How are you doing, Devin Tingo? You guys doing okay? You're holding down the fort? Everything is everything, my friend, and that is because you left us a great foundation to work with, Uh, unlike the Chicago Bears, to a lot of Bears fans, to have seen that all the good vibes they were going, even, you know, we don't, here on the Sports Cubicle and the same thing on the Rewind Sports 60, we don't like talking about people losing their jobs. We're not about that here. We don't like dancing on the graves of people and their job, but we knew that Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace were going to be let go. And then this press conference with George McCaskey happens. Devin and I talked about it. You're, you're picking fights with Olin Cruz. You're talking about being a fan, but also evaluating who the next coach and GM are going to be. You are telling us Ted Phillips is going to be in charge of the new stadium, but then he's also going to help in the decision-making of who the GM is. When you were listening to that press conference and all the years that you've covered this team, seen the sports in this great city, what were your initial reactions after George McCaskey's 90-minute-ish press conference this past week? Well, you know what? <laughs> that's, a, that's a great question. It's a million-dollar question. And my initial reaction after following that uh, near-hour press conference between uh, uh, the chairman, George McCaskey, and, of course, uh, Ted Phillips with the media exchange there, I was like, wow, these guys are pretty well-educated. They must have gone to a really special school as far as uh, educating them on how to spend Dr. Uh, every question that's presented to them because they do a fabulous job of dodging and avoiding answering the question. Um, so I commended them from that standpoint. But as far as, you know, covering this team and following this team and, and hearing the, you know, the banter from the, the front office is, is pretty much business as usual. And the unfortunate thing about it is uh, the fans at the end of the day are the ones who, who, who suffer, you know, the consequences, the end results. And uh, as you guys know, uh, being a lifelong Chicago Bear fan, we bleed and, and die orange and blue over there on the lakefront throughout the uh, the fall every year. And to see the, the front office and the chairman of the Storybook franchise to pretty much do a song and dance with us, uh, you know, to try to convince us that they're on the right path and ready to turn the page in the right direction. It's just, it simply is BS, to be honest with you. And it's sad and it's disappointing that Chicago Bear fans have to endure this and, and sit on pins and needles and hopes, in the hope that they can make the right decision. There are a bunch of superb candidates out there that the Bears can certainly entertain and bring in and hopefully make a good, good, wise decision. Thank goodness they have Bill Polian at the helm to try to help make the decision in the right direction. But if it's left in the hands of Ted Phillips, and, and, I, and I like George McCaskey, but if it's left in his hands, uh, this this we're just going down another slippery slope. And again, we'll spend another three to five years watching mediocrity on the lakefront every fall, and which is uh, it's, it's, it's unnecessary, it's uncalled for. And I hope that I'm wrong. But right now, the way it's trending, it doesn't look like it. The one and only Jerry Rouse joins us for just a few more moments. We are going to tease a little bit of this conversation with the great one, Jerry Riles from the Rewind Sports 60, the godfather of the sports cubicle. It is Devin Tingle, myself, Mike Mercado, trying to make sense of what we saw over at Hallis Hall. Devin, you saw a lot of the nonsense that was coming from this team and you were one of the, the people in the head of the train about firing everyone, but you saw what happened in this press conference. What are your thoughts? And I mean, what do you have for Jerry? Well, as you can see, I'm wearing my fire everyone t-shirt, which I told you Mercado, I can retire this, but apparently not here. Cause there's still some changes that need to be, get made. And I got to say, just, you know, I, I really wonder just what's going on here. You know, George McCaskey talking about how, you know, the ownership thinks he's doing a good job. I'm like, wait, Virginia McCaskey, 
they have the same last name. Wait a minute, guys. I wonder what that's all about. Well, but yeah. yeah, Jerry, you actually have the privilege of uh, having an interview with George McCaskey here. So, I mean, out of the three of us, you're the only one here who's asked him, you know, questions like this. So does any of this kind of seem surprising that he was, you know, just spin doctor and everything kind of, you know, just it seemed like he actually wasn't prepared, especially some of those questions. You look at his face. He's got that look like, oh, that's happening or, oh, you're asking me this. So, Jerry, just does, does any of this really surprise you as you're the, you know, only one that, you know, kind of knows George McCaskey here? You know, I, I wasn't surprised by his, his, his comments and his remarks, uh, you know, during the press conference because, again, it appears as if they're scripted to, you know, to answer. And when I say they, I, I mean the brass uh, up at Hallis Hall in particular to answer specific questions in a specific manner in a specific way without really giving you an answer to the question that was asked. But I do have to say I commend the Chicago media who – more or less took him behind the woodshed mm -hmm. and, and held up the task and say, hey, listen, you know, what's going on here? What are you guys going to do? Why should the Bear fans think that you're going to do something different if you've all along been doing the same thing, i.e., you know, with the uh, supposed rumor of, of Nike being fired after the Thanksgiving Day game, the Bears are customary at, at keeping their coaches on until the end of the season. So why would Bear fans think any differently as far as how they're going to handle the process, especially with Ted Phillips still involved, not only with the uh, negotiations and, and trying to move forward at Arlington Heights location, but also trying to find a new GM and a new head coach. It, it, it makes no sense. And so I do commend the Chicago media for rolling up their sleeves and, and sticking out their chest and saying, we're not going to let you get away with this. And, you know, again, George McCaskey and Ted Phillips, song and dance, doing a tap dance, smoking mirrors, you know, answered the questions but didn't answer the questions. And to you guys' point, for them to get involved with a back and forth between a former player and Olin Cruz, are you kidding me? You're telling me that you have harsher words for Olin Cruz because he put out there publicly that you offered him $15 an hour to come consult for the offensive line, and you say, well, I hope that when he gets his uh, Hall of Fame induction speech, he includes that. Are you really telling me that you're, as the chairman of the Chicago Bears, stooping to the level of a former, former player and try to throw him under the bus? That was totally, totally uncalled for, unnecessary, and ridiculous. And it just shows you the type of mentality, the mindset that the Bears brass have up there and it, again, it is kind of scary as far as the direction they're going to bring in a new GM and a new head coach. And I hope, I hope there are a lot of talk out there for Jim Harbaugh. My personal reasons is uh, obviously he, he coaches that school up north. Um, <laughs> but as far as his, his, his success rate on a professional level with the San Francisco 49ers, he's a no nonsense, no, no nonsense guy. And, and I had the privilege of covering him when he was the Bears quarterback years ago. So I like that selection, but I truly believe the Bears to seriously concentrate on uh, an African American or minority candidate. And that candidate to me is the defensive coordinator for the Buffalo Bills that of course former Bear Leslie Frazier. I think he should be the top candidate that the Bears not only interview, and, and, and extensively, but I think he should be the next head coach for the Chicago Bears. Jerry, we can do this all day, and we promise the people of Chicago, the loyal listeners of the Rewind Sports 60, and the new companions that we have because of the great Jerry Riles here on the Sports Cubicle, to have a deep dive conversation about this, because we need to talk about the record. They talk about record being a defining thing, and George McCaskey doesn't have a good record. We could talk about Brian Flores. We could talk about Leslie Frazier. We could talk about a lot of great minority coaches that should be in the conversation for the Chicago Bears. Jerry, we have about a minute left, and we thank the godfather, Jerry Rouse, for joining us today. Your final thoughts on what you heard from that press conference, your final emotions, and like we said, we're going to have you back on to really deep dive this, but for the people, your loyal people, what are your final your final thoughts as you just do over this craziness? You know what? It's a pleasure always to join you guys, and I'm so proud of what you guys have been able to do to take the baton and extend it and take it to an even higher level. So kudos to you guys. My closing thoughts are, think about this, guys. If you guys, I, you, you guys may or may not be old enough uh, to, to, to remember this, but John Elway, when he was coming out uh, Stanford, 
you know, he, he made a decision where he wanted to play professionally. We know that Peyton Manning wanted to make sure that his professional team was sufficient enough for him to go on a long run. And of course, you know, both those guys won Super Bowls. And even with Eli Manning dictating where he wanted to play professionally, just Justin Fields is our quarterback. Don't be too surprised if Justin Fields and his agent hold the Bears accountable and take them to task and say, you know what, I want to play for this particular guy. Now, whether that's John, uh, Jim Harbaugh or uh, Leslie Frazier or another minority coach, and he might say, hey, I want this general manager. This quarterback, Justin Fields, out of the Ohio State University, <laughs> has a lot of power behind the scenes, and he can structure the direction of where this franchise goes for the next 10, 15 years based on the coach's selection that needs to take place within a matter of weeks. That's my closing thoughts, and stay tuned to it. You can almost take it to the bank, to be honest with you. We love you, Jerry. Thank you so much. The Rewind Sports 60, the home of Sports from the Couch and the Sports Cubicle, along with everything here on WCPT 820. We're proud to be part of that family. Jerry, thank you so much. We got a jam-packed show here on the Sports Cubicle. It's Paul Shavari, Dan Marver, of course, Devin Tingle, and myself, Mike Mercado.